I'm walking with Jesus every day, every moment with Him. His power and presence is changing my life from within, and my life is transformed by His power, and my life is transformed by His grace. And my life is transformed by the words that he speaks over me as I look on his face. Today I choose to follow you. Jesus, I will follow you. Today I choose to live for you. Jesus, you are all I walking with you. Good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to another hour of prayer and worship. It's good to have you with us again today. Great to be part of this company of people who are engaging in prayer, intercession, prayer requests, and um, praying in song, praying in word. And if you have a personal prayer request, don't forget, you can always, at any time, contact our prayer 24-hour prayer center by telephone or by email. And we will be sharing again today answers to prayer that we've seen happening in our midst because God is a prayer answering God. And as always, our prayer points are based on Scripture so that we know we're praying in line with the will of God. And currently we are praying through the book of Ecclesiastes, and we're in chapter 9, and we come to the last few verses of chapter 9, verses 13 to 18. And verse 18 says this, sorry, verse 17. Um, Better to hear the quiet words of a wise person than the shouts of a foolish king. So, wisdom, wise words. Not all of us are clever, but all of us can be wise. And wisdom comes through knowing the Bible, knowing the Word of God. And some people can be in positions of power and influence. Talks about the shouts of a foolish king. Well, we can be in a position of power and influence, but we don't necessarily have wisdom. There are lots of people who are in places of governing who don't necessarily have wisdom. But wisdom can come from anybody. We don't have to be clever to be wise. What we have to have is the Word of God, the knowledge of the Word of God. So I trust then that you are people who not only pray, obviously you pray because you're part of this great company, but also people who systematically read the Bible, study the Bible, because that's where we get the wisdom for life from. And if you have a a plan for uh, that you use to follow to uh, read the Bible, different parts of the Bible, that's one way to do it. If you don't, then I would suggest that you read through the Bible systematically. So start at one book, start at chapter one, read a few verses, uh, a few few chapters each day, come back to it the next day, and then uh, read right through to the end. So you've got the understanding of the whole book. Because the Bible is a a, a library of books. It has um, about 40 different human authors, but one editor, and that editor is the Holy Spirit. And it deals with one story that is the fall of mankind, the redemption through Jesus Christ, and the restoration at the end when everything is redeemed and restored through through Jesus Christ. So we need to be people who know the Bible. So very important that we are um, disciplined in our devotional life, not only in prayer but also reading the Bible, and so that we have times each day. And it will be different for different people depending on our schedules that we can say that's the time I'm setting aside for reading the Bible. Before I came into ministry and I I was in another job, I uh, had a very busy job, but I used my lunch hour. So each lunch hour, I knew I had that time free. I could just use that to read the Bible as I ate my lunch, and that I found very helpful uh, in those circumstances. So um, influence comes through wisdom. And there's a story in the Old Testament about uh, a little girl, a Jewish girl who was captured by the Syrians and made a slave. And she was working for uh, the 
in the household of Naaman, the commander of the Syrian army. Uh, uh, Syrian army. She was a, a little girl, but she knew the Lord. And she was the one that told Naaman, who, was, who had leprosy, how he could be healed through the prophet Elisha, who knew the true God. And that little girl, through her words of wisdom, was able for that commander, who wasn't part of Israel, wasn't a Jew, to come to know the true, true God and see the power of God. And that was a great testimony as well, no doubt, was uh, known throughout the, the country. So we're going to start by praying, first of all, that um, God will help us to be people of wisdom so that we can, uh, and that the wisdom that we get comes through his word, so that we can be uh, an influence to others through being able to bring the wisdom of God whenever that's necessary. So let's pray for ourselves, first of all. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, the Bible, Lord. But it's, it's wonderful that we have your word. And thank you, Lord, for the privilege of knowing the mind of God through reading the Bible. Lord, you reveal yourself to us and so many things to us. And we thank you, Lord, for the, the treasure that the Bible is. And Lord, help us, we pray, to be people who not only read the Bible, Lord, but understand it and are able to apply it to everyday life. Lord, so that we can speak words of wisdom in any and every situation in daily life, we pray, especially to those round about us. So Holy Spirit, we pray, help us, guide us, and enable us to um, receive your word as we read it, understand it, and use it for your glory, we pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Now we're going to start with a, a great declaration, um, which is uh, the, the song... The great I am. That's God's name. I am. I am who I am. Yahweh. So we're going to start just by declaring, God, you're the God. There is no other God. You're the God of wisdom. And we just praise and thank you for who you are. I want to be close, close to your side.
the great I am. Oh God, we just want to praise you and we want to worship you today, oh God, because you are indeed the great I am. The mountains may shake and tremble, Lord Jesus. Demons will flee in your very presence. Oh God, we just want to praise you, honor you and say thank you, Lord, that this great God is with us even now. You're with us, oh God. You're holding us up in your arms, Lord Jesus, into your arms of love, in your arms of protection, in your, lo in your loving, caring arms. God, we just want to praise you. Even though you're the great I am, we are the children of our almighty God. You are our almighty God and we praise you and we love you, Jesus. Lord, we pray for everyone who've joined in this prayer meeting, oh God. We pray, God, for the glory of God to come upon them, oh God. Let them know that you're the great I am, oh God. God, we pray, Lord, that, that, that anyone, Lord, even at this time, been, been attacked by any unseen powers, oh God, powers of darkness, oh God, over their minds, oppression, oh God, over their hearts, oh God, bad dreams and nightmares, be, we command you to go in the name of Jesus, oh God, let your power, let your glory embrace every person. Encourage everyone, oh God, who've joined in this prayer meeting, Lord Jesus, because you are the great I am and we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If you have pain in your body and the pain seems to be moving from one place into the other, just lay your hand on your body and we just pray with you. Those around about who've joined us, prayer meeting let's pray for the spirit of pain to be gone from your body in the name of jesus and in the power of the holy spirit if your pain in your body there hops around to different parts of your body randomly at any time just lay your hand upon your body and we pray for you in jesus name father in the name of jesus and in the power of the holy spirit we command that pain to go we rebuke you now your spirit of pain we command you be gone in the name of jesus and in the power of the holy spirit thank you lord for your glory for your anointing power of your holy ghost thank you spirit of the living god thank you jesus thank you holy spirit amen the name of jesus is awesome the name of jesus is powerful thank you lord thank you a couple of short testimonies i'll share with you one mother was truly delighted. She said, my daughter suffered from bullying at school for eight long months by a gang of children. It caused us so much distress and headache. We constantly brought this matter up before the Lord and she got others to pray along with her for her daughter. And her daughter was also praying, a young girl. I also continue to encourage my daughter who was finding it really difficult even to go to school and having to face these bullies daily. The bullies even threatened to beat her up and they used abusive language on her. Even the police had to be informed of this bullying. And God did an, an awesome thing one day. This is what happened. The ringleaders, the one, the big bully, the main one, his pen broke in the class. And my daughter was the only one who could help him. She was the only one who had a spare pen at this time to offer to this boy. So my daughter offered her, her a pen to him that he could continue his work in the class. The ringleader's mouth fell open to see an act of kindness done to him by this girl, by her daughter. The very person that he and others had been bullying her. And from that time on, the bullying stopped just like that. The, the ringleader and all the others stopped bullying her. They were really, really nice to her. All those that bullied my daughter have become very friendly to her. And her daughter is really happy. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And there's another short story just, just come around, um, just come uh, recently. It's, it's a great answer to prayer by a sister. Um, this is what she says. A sister who nearly lost a job because of a colleague at work made some unfounded allegations against her. 
she received a letter about a formal hearing and dismissal from her employer. At the hearing, her employer apologized about the threat of dismissal. The sister retained her job. The main allegations were dismissed and a warning given and training. She prayed persistently and passionately and got the church also to get behind her to pray. And the Lord stood by her because he is her winner, she says. He is a winner. We serve a mighty God. I'm forever grateful for the cross. Thank you, Jesus, she says. She's got a very responsible job. She could have lost it. False allegations made against her by another work colleague. And she was to be dismissed. But thank you, Jesus. She was not the, in the hearing. Her employer apologized about the threat of dismissal. And she retained her job. Hallelujah. And all the um, allegations, uh, uh, all those things were dismissed. Isn't God good when lies are thrown against us? Even as believers, it may be in your workplace or in your school, which, whichever way that you have been, uh, when bullies come against us, we can pray, bring it up to Jesus and, and allow him to deal with it. Sometimes it can be very painful, it can go on for a long time, but we pray that God will come through for us. Today, maybe that you've been bullied at work. Perhaps you've got allegations that have been thrown against you by those who are jealous, want you out of the job. Perhaps somebody else is behind your job. I don't know. But but there may be false allegations made against you. Or you know your child come home really depressed because your child has been bullied by girls or by boys or whichever person that, that, the, that don't like them. Let's pray. If you have a situation such as this, you bring it up before Jesus and those around about in our homes who haven't got any such problems. Let's pray for those who, who are going through bullying at this time, at school or false allegations at work. It can be so painful, so trying. It can rob us of our sleep. But let's pray. Father God, we thank you, God. Let me read this word to you first, the scripture. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6 says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. If you're going through allegations, your child has been bullied. The Lord is there with your child. Keep praying and it will be overturned in Jesus' name. Father, we want to say thank you, God. You are the God. You are the great I am, even as we've been singing, oh God. Lord, there, there are people, even in our midst, oh God, even amongst us who are going through false allegations at workplaces, God, where people just want them out of the job because they might hate them or dislike them and cause uh, all sorts of lies to be thrown against your sons and daughters at workplaces, God, or the children being bullied as well at school. Whichever way, God, the, the bullies are coming and false and lies are thrown against the children of God. Lord, you said, oh God Almighty, be courageous, be strong. Don't be terrified because of them, because the Lord goes before you. God, we pray that you will never leave them nor forsake them, oh God. And please, God, we pray, even as you answer the prayers of these two, two people, oh God, you come through, Lord, for those who have been bullied at this time, that all those allegations and lies will be destroyed and they will come to nothing in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray, God, that you will expose every lies of the enemy in Jesus' name and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Every false allegations brought against any employees, any born-again believer, we Come, we, we break those allegations now and we command those spirit behind those allegations, those lies to be destroyed in the name of Jesus and in the power of the Holy Spirit. The truth will be revealed, oh God. Children at school who are afraid of going to school because of bullies, oh God, come through for the children, oh God, that those who are bullying them, oh God, will stop bullying them, God, so that the children will be happy at school. Thank you, Jesus Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. We've gone to our first prayer point. Lord, enable us to be a godly influence over every member of our family. And we pray for our unsaved family members that you would save them now. Godly families, as we all know, are the bedrock of any spiritual community and having godly children can be such a blessing to parents so we're going to pray that God will bring 
to uh, salvation, our family members, our sons and daughters, that they come to know Jesus as the Lord and Savior of their lives. And raising children, as we all know, is a, man, is a parent's mandate. We, it's our responsibility to raise them up in God's ways. So let's, uh, let's pray for them. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray, O oh God, for strong marriages, O oh God. We pray for parents to remain strong in their marriage, that they will have godly influence over their children, O oh God. Lord, if there are single parents as well, we pray, O oh God, they, they're also responsible, God, for bringing up the children in your ways. So, Lord, we pray for parents, O oh God Almighty, for your hand to rest upon them, God, that they will love and nurture their children in your ways, God. Lord, for those who are really, really busy, God Almighty, at work, doing secular jobs, we pray, Lord, that they will find time, they will make time and make children their, their priority, Lord Jesus. Children are our priority, O oh God. Lord, it's for us to grow them up in you, Jesus, by, by educating them in your word, O oh God, or showing them how to read your word, Lord Jesus, and praying with them, O oh God, and teaching them how to pray so that their hearts will be connected to you, Lord. God, because one day they're going to fly the nest, oh God. They're not going to remain children or little kids all their life, God. So, Lord, help them to grow them in you. Uh, even while they are very young, Lord Jesus. God, for children that need discipline as well, Lord, help us. We need so much wisdom. Parents need wisdom, God. Help every parent who's got a young child who, or who have children or teenagers or youths, Lord, who need discipline, God. Grant them great wisdom at this time, oh God, that they know what, what to say so that the children will listen to what the parents are saying. God, totally, totally undertake, God. Lord, we also pray, Lord Jesus, that every member of our families, oh God, little children, teenagers, Lord, they, they will come to know you as the Lord and Savior of, of their lives, Lord, and every, no matter what age it is, God. Lord, we pray for those who are even now grown up, Lord, our children, maybe some, Lord, who, who are not believers yet, God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit, that you bring hope into the life of the young adults who, who, who may be or of any age who once heard the gospel, God, but they've turned their back to you, Lord, or who choose not to believe on you. God, oh God, break that spirit of rebellion in them, the spirit of darkness, Lord, over their minds, that they will come to know you as the Lord and Savior of their lives. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. To your name be glory, honor, and praise. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Amen. And let's just simply shout to the Lord with a song of praise. Let's continue to pray to Jesus by shouting out to him in praise. Amen.
just thank you Lord we can shout unto you our praises our worship because of who you are Lord you are our God and Lord God if anything is worth shouting about it's you and Lord God we see in the Psalms it tells us not only to sing to praise but also to shout unto the Lord so Lord we just thank you and praise you for who you are amen so we're praying through then the scripture that says better to hear the quiet words of a wise person and the shouts of a foolish king. So, um, words of influence that we can have. I'm always talking about the fact that as followers of Jesus, we are here to influence people for Jesus um, in all that we do. So, our next prayer point then is um, praying for all our pastors, elders, ministry and departmental leaders, teachers of children and youth, um, that God would help each one to bring a godly influence on those that they minister to. So at this time, I want us to just begin by, let's just praying for the churches in this nation to be uh, people who can bring wise words. We're in a place of turmoil at the moment. The, the nation has been shaken, and very often when God wants to move in revival in a nation, he will shake it first of all. He will bring a shaking so that people are shaken out of their normal routine of thinking, their complacency. And it gives an opportunity for people to turn their thoughts to him. So right now around the country, there are lots of people who, are, who have been shaken. And let's just pray first of all, all the churches, all the local churches, in every town, city, uh, village, will be places where people can go to and find the wisdom of God at this time. Um, as God is preparing this nation for a move of the Holy Spirit in revival. So let's just pray for the churches first. Father... We just bring all the churches in this nation, Lord God, before you. Father, we pray for every denomination, Lord, where the gospel is preached, where people can go and hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we just pray right now, Lord God, that this will be a time, Holy Spirit, when you will be um, causing people to turn their thoughts to, to church, Lord, a place that they wouldn't normally think about. Um, the local church, the local Christians, or the church <coughs> online, Lord. We just pray, Lord God, this will be a time that the church will be an influence, that wisdom, the wisdom of the gospel, Lord, will be able to go to those whose, whose um, hearts and minds are open because of the current situation in our nation, Lord, that's causing so much discomfort, distress, pain for many people. Lord God, we just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're just going to pray. We're going to pray for our our pastors and elders in the church let's do that you know the, we need the wisdom of God especially at this time we're going through a situation that we've never been through before and we need to know Holy Spirit what's your mind what's your will what's your purpose in this situation so let's just bring our all our, our leadership before God right now so that um, asking that the Holy Spirit would just guide our thoughts 
things are not the same. They will not be the same. They will be different. And so we need to, to know, Holy Spirit, what's your strategy for this moment? Where do you want us lead us? Where do you want to lead us to as a church out of this turmoil that the nation is in? So let's can we all join together and pray, please? Father, we just thank you, Lord, that um, we can look to you for wisdom. And Father, we just bring before you right now, Lord God, the pastors and elders of the church. And Lord, we just pray for wisdom, Lord God. We just pray to know the mind of Christ, to know the leading of the Holy Spirit, to know, Holy Spirit, your strategies for this hour, for this season. Lord God, we as a nation have never been in this position before. Lord, never has the churches been closed down through an infection like this one. Lord God, we're in new territory, but Lord God, it's not new for you because you can foresee the future. And Father, we just pray for wisdom in this situation to know the mind and the will of God. Lord, as leaders of this church and collectively, Lord, as the church, guide and lead us, Lord, as the body of Christ also, Lord God, to know your will and purpose. In Jesus' name, amen. Then let's just, um, can we pray for, um, let's pray for teachers, teachers in the church. Those who teach children, those who teach and um, uh, teach uh, youth, and that is currently going on um, through um, online services and through Zoom meetings. <coughs> so let's just pray for the teachers that God will give them the wisdom to deposit into the the lives of, of young people. So we've already prayed for parents, but let's pray now for teachers who are involved in this, and we just thank God for them. So let's let's pray. And if you're one of them, then put your hand on your head. We're praying for you. If there's any that you know by name, then you just name them by name right now. And let's just pray for the teachers and the uh, of children and youth right now. So Heavenly Father, we just bring before you right now, Lord God, all the teachers in this church. Father, we pray for the teachers of, uh, of the children in the church and teachers of the youth, Lord God. We just pray, Lord, for wisdom, Lord in all that they do, Lord, as they minister to the young people, Lord, what a, a wonderful privilege it is, Lord, to deposit the words of God into the lives of young people, shaping their lives, shaping their minds, shaping their attitudes, shaping their spiritual life. And Lord God, we just pray, Lord, give them the wisdom to know what to say at all times, and Lord, particularly to lead them to Christ. We pray, Lord, that we'll see young people at an ever younger age, Lord, yielding their lives to Jesus, giving their lives to Christ and coming to know Jesus as their Savior and Lord. So Father, we pray for all the teachers in the church. Help them, Lord, we ask in Jesus' name. And just while we're praying for the teachers in the church, let's just pray for teachers who are in the church but are also but who are teaching in schools. So this is a, a difficult time as the schools have been going back, new situations, um, new challenges. So let's pray for all our teachers as well. Uh, those who are, are, are school teachers in the church, and we pray for the teachers who are not part of the church. So if you, if you are one, then pray for yourself. If you know one by name, then you name them as we pray for them right now. <coughs> so Father, we thank you, Lord, for those of your children, Lord, who teach in the schools. Father, we thank you for the opportunity that they have. We thank you, Lord, for the influence they have. We thank you, Lord God, that just being a follower of Jesus in that environment, Lord, car <coughs> carries something of your presence. And Lord God, we just pray right now for all our teachers in the church, Lord, who are school teachers. Father, we pray for them, or those who teach in colleges as well. Father, we lift them up before you. We just pray you'll help them at this time. Lord, give them strength, give them wisdom, give them protection, protect them, Lord God, we pray. From every danger seen and unseen, we ask. Lord, we commit them into your hands. Pray, Lord God, that you would um, watch over them and their families also, Lord God, that they will be safe in school, they'd be safe in their homes. Lord God, that nothing um, would penetrate the protection, Lord, that you put round about them, we ask. Lord, we uplift them before you and ask in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And then finally, let's pray for all our other leaders in the church. So um, let's pray for our discipleship. Cell, uh, discipleship group leaders um, and any other uh, departmental leaders, those who lead in worship and um, other areas of the church. 
in all the administrative areas, um, finance and all those areas, for wisdom, that we might um, move in the wisdom of God. So let's pray. If you're one of them, pray for yourself. If you know somebody by name, name them right now. Father, we just lift before you all those, Lord, who lead in the church in all different areas. We pray, Lord, first of all, for the discipleship group leaders, Lord. Thank you for their lives. Pray, Lord, for them that you would give them wisdom as they facilitate, Lord, their their discipleship groups. We just pray, Lord, that there would be a blessing and anointing upon them, a protection upon them also, Lord God. And, Lord, as they minister week by week to others, we pray, Lord, that you will infill them with your Holy Spirit. Anoint them, we ask, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, for all the other leaders in the church, Lord God, who are ministering, uh, even during this lockdown period, Lord, we pray for them right now, all those in worship. We commit to you, Lord God, all those in administrative areas. Lord God, all those in technical areas. Lord God, we commit them all into your hands. Um, we, we, in the finances, Lord, we just pray for all of them, Lord God, and lift them up before you. Thank you, Lord, for their talents, gifts, and abilities, and for everything that they do. Lord, help each one to move in the wisdom of God, we pray. Lord God, we need to hear from you in, in all that we do so that we do it well and we do it fruitfully, we pray. So, Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Lord, we can do nothing without you, Holy Spirit. So, Lord, come and just surround us with your presence and just minister in and through us, Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to continue to pray it now in song and we're going to declare Spirit Breakout. that you will break out, Spirit of the living God. Break out in our homes, Holy Spirit. Break out in our children's lives, in our family lives. Break out over this church. 
Ealing Christian Center and other churches that I joined us in prayer, break out over the city, over this nation and nations of the world. Holy Spirit, we pray, come how we need you, Holy Spirit, at this time. Oh, Spirit of the living God, let your influence, Holy Spirit, come upon us all, Spirit of the living God. Oh, Jesus, and Lord, any wall of opposition that could be coming against the church of Jesus Christ, coming against us as believers, oh God, that you break those walls down, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Amen. Amen. We continue to um, pray for the discipleship groups and also uh, just a couple of short testimonies from the discipleship groups. Uh, this was sent during the lockdown, during the lockdown period. And I'll just read to you one or two of them. One sister, she, during the lockdown time, she became very, very sick. And she had to receive various treatments and and doing even the housework and shopping was very difficult for her. The discipleship group members would come alongside her and they would do her shopping for her and drop it by the door. This went on for some time because she was had to receive treatment. And also um, what, what she was advised to eat for her own body and goodness was organic food. And organic food can be quite expensive. So they were actually paying for the organic food, buying it for her and giving it to her. And in fact, they cared, they looked after her like their own sister. That's what they were doing. And this is the discipleship members that were doing that for, for this uh, discipleship, you know, the sister who fell ill. They were all part of a group. And they're so concerned for her that they would pray with her over the line, telephone lines and... And whatever else that she needed, they would be there to support and help her. And, and this is what discipleship groups are all about. They study the word. Then again, there is the a caring element of that as well, witnessing to. And, and though these groups, they remain connected with each other through prayer, through their Zoom meetings. That's what they're doing, the weekly Zoom meetings now, which has resumed after the holiday time they started again in September and I remember one sister during the um, lockdown period she didn't have a television and one of the group leaders had a spare one so she gave one she gave the TV to her so that she could log on the church services and be connected to the world so to say she didn't have a TV and and such love and kindness been shown and, and such testimony such as you know what, I've grown even more over this pandemic time than I did before the pandemic. There are many discipleship cell members, as they connect with each other, each other, have been saying that how spiritually they've grown so much in the Lord, even through the love and support they have for each other. So if you're part of Healing Christian Center, if you're a member of ECC and you're not part of a discipleship, discipleship group, please um, if you can just send an email to info at ecc.org.uk, uh, we'll get in touch with you. If you're part, part of Ealing Christian Centre, not part of a discipleship cell group, um, whether you're in a men's, uh, whether you're man or woman, please connect with us and we will direct you in the, into the right group. Uh, they meet at the moment with Zoom, Skype, you name it, all kinds of social media where they can connect with one another. Praise God. God is so good. And let's pray for the discipleship group leaders and members. Prayer point three, we pray for all our discipleship group leaders and, and in all our discipleship groups that each would seek to build one another up in Christ, spurring one another to do good deeds for Jesus. So discipleship group leaders and all in our discipleship groups, that's the members who are in the groups. So they continue to build each other up and doing good works for Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, Therefore encourage one another and build one another just as you are doing. So let's pray, continue to pray for the discipleship group leaders because we're encouraging discipleship groups to really grow in ECC because there's one good way of connecting with one another even at this time. 
Lord Jesus, we pray, God, for the increase in discipleship groups, oh God. We pray, Lord Jesus, for the groups that we had, oh God. Let them be multiplied a hundredfold, oh God. Lord Jesus, that, that every member of of ECC will want to be part of a discipleship group at this time so they can connect with others, oh God. Lord Jesus, we pray for the leaders, God, that they need so much wisdom. They need so much understanding, oh God, to know how to, how to lead, how to pastor the other members under their care. God, help them, Lord. And Lord, we pray that you help, especially those who've got... Uh, families, they got to look after the families and then they got to get ready for, for their meetings, for the Zoom meetings or Skype meetings uh, with the Word. Lord, give them all the energy and strength that they need, O oh God. And any issues that they may have, Lord Jesus, in their own life, workplaces or family issues or whatever issues they may have, God, please help the leaders, O oh God. Lord, as you know, it doesn't mean if they are leaders, O oh God, they, they, they are they're perfect or they won't have any problems. They're just human like all of us, God, and they need the empowering of your Holy Spirit and they need your help, O oh God. All the help that you can give them from heaven, O oh God. Give it to them, Lord Jesus. Continue to empower them and continue to strengthen them in every way, Lord Jesus, so that they be strengthened, O oh God, to serve you mightily, O oh God. And Lord, we also pray for all the members, O oh God, who are part of the discipleship groups. Lord, even has been hearing reports, O oh God, of how they have grown in the Lord and how they are loving each other and connecting with each other and gone into another level spiritually. Lord, we pray for all the discipleship members, O oh God, that you continue to keep them connected, God, even as they pray for one another, care for one another in times of happiness, in times of bereavement, in times of, of grief or troubles that they may have. Oh God, that support will be there. That's what the church is, oh God. Like in the book of Acts, they cared for one another. They looked after one another. Oh God, Father, help every person that no one will feel alone in Ealing Christian Center, God. God, nobody needs to feel alone. God, I pray, Lord, putting on the hearts of men and women, oh God, even the youths that they will be part of discipleship group, Lord, where they will continue to grow in you, even via Zoom groups, Skype, or whichever form of media, God, that they are be able to link in, oh God, and join into the, with these groups that, oh God, no one need to feel alone. Oh God, help the church to remain connected and strong, God, even during the season of pandemic. Father, we just want to praise you, honor you, glorify your name, oh God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy, God, upon every ECC member, God, that you will continue to enlarge every Ealing Christian Center member. And, oh, God, every person, God, from other churches who have logged on the prayer meetings, God, bless them, oh, God, and bless them in their churches and bless their churches that they will continue to prosper, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Let love of God abound in our discipleship groups and amongst believers with one another so the world can see, God, that they love one another so that it be a testimony to the world. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Before the throne of God above, what an awesome prayer song that we're just going to pray through this song. Before the throne of God above, you know, God is our almighty God. He's the great I am. Let's continue to worship our great I am. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 
Who can be against us? The Bible says it is God who justifies us, the one who declares us not guilty on the basis that an innocent man has paid the penalty for our sin. So we could just come before the throne of God. What a wonderful privilege that we have that we, <coughs> we're using right now. So uh, as we come to our last prayer point, it says this, Lord, help us to walk so close to you that we make a godly influence on those around us each day, even when we are unaware of it. There's a story in the book of Acts that says about Peter. Peter was walking along the streets and people were just trying just to get into his shadow. If only his shadow could pass by, they said we can um, receive healing from Jesus. Well, the truth is that we, we carry a presence of God by virtue of the fact that we belong to Jesus. In fact, there's a passage in 2 Corinthians that speaks about that we, we carry the fragrance of Christ. We are the fragrance of Christ to others, um, those verses say. And so we're just going to conclude this evening just by praying, Lord, um, we want to be people who have wise words. We get wisdom from the Bible. We get God's presence as we wait upon Him and on the Holy Spirit. So let's just conclude with this prayer now then that Lord help us to walk so close to you that we make a godly influence on those around us even if we're not aware of it so Heavenly Father we bring ourselves before you right now we thank you Lord that we're clothed with the righteousness of Christ Lord we are not sinless your word tells us but Lord we are forgiven and we are clothed with the righteousness of Jesus not our own righteousness Lord but your righteousness and we thank you Lord God that you have made this possible as a righteous judge removing our sin through the wonderful Son of God dying in our place and Lord we thank you also that Jesus that you've sent your Holy Spirit so that when we know you we're born again of the Spirit and so we carry the presence of the Holy Spirit around wherever we are as temples of the Holy Spirit and Lord we just pray Lord that we will as we walk through life, as we walk through daily situations, Lord God, that like Peter's shadow, something of your presence, Lord, will just follow us where we go. And those, Lord, who come in our influence, Lord, will be significantly impacted, even if we're not aware of it, Lord God. Just through the way that we act, the way that we talk, the way that we, uh, the attitudes that we have, Lord, the decisions that we make and the words that we, of wisdom, Lord, that we give to others. Lord, help us just to be people, Lord, who are influencers of others through the very fact that we carry the Holy Spirit's presence around with us. So, Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Help us to be, Lord, that fragrance, fragrance of Jesus Christ, Lord, to all those round about us, we pray. So, Lord, we pray. Let us be those people, Lord, who, who can give quiet words of wisdom which are far more significant than the shouts of a foolish king. Lord, we give you praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to conclude um, right now with a, just reminding God, to telling God rather, that we have 
many, many reasons to, to praise Him and to thank Him. And this particular song is called 10,000 Reasons. So let's just conclude by declaring, Lord, we've got at least 10,000 reasons to praise you, to worship you, to thank you, and many more. 